Hello and welcome to On The Curbs. I'm your host, Timo Alvarez Daily. Joining me this week is one of the latest members of Team Brit, James Whitley. We caught up recently to chat about how he got into motorsport, why he wanted to join Team Brit, what his ambitions are for the 2022 racing season, and much more. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Hi, James. Thanks for being here today. First of all, how are you? Uh, I'm very well, thanks. Uh, I'm just in Norway at the moment, but yeah, just recovered from Christmas and New Year, but I'm all well. Getting getting knee-deep in snow, I imagine, up there. Yeah, it's very cold, um, lots of snowy conditions. Uh, you know, as always, I always find it good fun to drive on, apart from anything, as well as skiing. It's a good test. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, when you're on sort of driving on the snow, I, I just love the sort of car control aspect. Everything's in slow motion and it's sort of, I feel like it translates a little bit to the racetrack, actually. Hmm. It's always about seeing what you can uh, take from other areas and just apply it in there. You never know what, what might be helpful. Definitely. Just um, sort of have it, getting used to pressing the traction control button off, you know, on a, on a loose surface is like, yeah, you know, getting comfortable with a sliding car definitely helps. Yeah, definitely. And talking talking of that, you're one of the latest drivers for Team Brit. They're, they're expanding rapidly, it would seem, at the moment. And obviously, they're the all-disabled racing team. So first of all, can you tell us a bit about your disability and how it impacts you? Yeah, so uh, I have um, basically both of my hands, I've got two fingers on my left hand uh, and three fingers on my right um, and basically uh, I was born like that had dozens and dozens of operations to try and get the function I have today to do sort of basic tasks like you know cut your food get dressed in the morning um, to be honest because I've been born with it uh, and now I'm 24 I've had 24 years of practice to say, used to it. I actually, yeah I, I guess I'm used to it as much as I would know uh, because I've never known anything else um, and so there's not really too many things I find tricky now like apart from maybe you know doing up a top button or like <laughs> you know little little small niggly things like that but actually most of the time uh, um, apart from if I'm trying to juggle it's not too much for him <laughs> and it kind of fits in quite well with that kind of it's it's normal for you and it should be a normalized thing everywhere that people should just get on board with that and it's very much what team is all about in terms of just yeah why why can people with disabilities not go and do this kind of thing yeah definitely i mean it what's nice about team brit is that there's no sort of excuses for anyone you know we're all treated just the same as everyone else um you know we're not in a special category of disabled drivers we're there just uh, just like the rest of uh, everyone trying to get a podium and I think so far we're proving we can be just as good if not better than uh, a lot of other teams. <laughs> so then have you always been interested in motorsport? I have been interested in motorsport from the day I was born. Uh, <laughs> no one can understand why I don't have a family into cars or motorsport um my parents are the opposite of racy or into high adrenaline sports uh so I'm a bit of a freak of nature in my family in that sense but I guess it's all kind of originated from my like ski racing because I've always been fascinated with speed um I love being in control of like um being in control it's like an individual sport in a way where you can't blame anyone but yourself if you drive or ski wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I've just, I've been lucky enough to sort of drive some pretty cool mountain roads going to my ski competitions on snowy roads um, all over the place. And I've always just absolutely loved driving. Um, so yeah, like cars and most sport, I, I've been sort of, 
tinkering on a little go-kart as soon as I had enough money to um, buy one. Um, I've always been sort of in my blood, I guess. It's just always been there in the background and now you've had the chance to properly realise it. Definitely. Like, uh, you, you know, I've, I've always watched a bit of Formula One, a bit of rallying, a, you know, kind <laughs> any, of... Any kind of racing. Of, yeah, like Formula Drift, um, you know, off-road racing, on-road racing, you know, touring car, whatever it may be. I I, I love it all because of there's such a sort of wide, you know, aspect of it mm. all, isn't there? So then how did you learn about Team Brit and what made you want to join them? So um, I spent three years at uni doing a course I did find interesting, but I knew that I had to be racing in my life. You know, I did not want to go and sit in an office Um it was not an option to me and I've always dreamed of being a racing driver like I've always gone to track days for fun you know I've always loved you know being in competitive sport and I just thought if I'm going to do this now I've got to do it now while I'm young while I can pick up all pick it up quickly you know um, you don't you don't know when the opportunity is going to come again so you kind of really exactly exactly like you always regret the things you don't do. And I I just thought I've got to just send an email and see if they'll be interested in um, seeing if I'm any good. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's how, shoot your shot. Yeah. And I just thought it was one rainy day after I just got my degree. And I just thought I really need to find something to do that I enjoy. And uh, it was the best. <laughs> it was the best rainy day ever. <laughs> So then you've been with the team a little while now. What's your rookie year with them been like? So uh, I actually did my first um, training days, I guess, uh, in August. So since then, I've been just been doing these academy days at Silverstone, Brands Hatch, Donington, uh, driving the BMW M240i um, and the 118 they have. Uh, and basically I've been doing driver coaching um, and basically just getting a feel, going over telemetry, going over sort of video analysis. Um, uh, and eventually they were said uh, I had a place in the 240 for next year. So since then, I've been pretty hectic buying all the gear, um, you know, getting the race licenses, doing the ARDS test, um, you know, basically doing as much research and practice on Gran Turismo sport as I could, you know, yeah. just while, while all the tracks are closed, you know, for the winter. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I basically, it's been a steep learning curve, but it's been pretty exciting ever since I started there. And so it's a steep learning curve, but one you're enjoying, I'm guessing, because it's just, again, it's this thing you've always wanted to be wanting to do. So. Yeah, absolutely. And like, um, to be with a load of like-minded people who are like more experienced than me, um, sort of feeding off them, you know, everyone's got a passion for the team, for the car, for the driving, um, and just, you know, speaking to the mechanics about exactly what, why it's so fast and how, mm-hmm. how to go for, get the most out of the car. I've just found so interesting. Um, yeah, it, it's been, it's been really good for me. So, you, so you've been getting up to speed basically with everything and you've been preparing yourself as much as you can. So what are your, your ambitions personally for 2022? My ambitions is, well, I'm going into the 240i that Team Brit have prepared really well. Uh, I, I want to get on the podium. You know, I want to get a, a podium in my first year of racing cars. Uh, I do think that is possible. I think uh, me and... Uh, Chris Obren, who is my teammate for next year, I think we'll be a pretty a pretty fast pair. Um, fingers crossed, uh, yeah. but you never know. Most sport, anything can happen. I'm say if if, uh, if you've got the same kind of skill and luck that uh, all of the drivers have proven to have so far, then that shouldn't be an issue for you. And uh, I don't think yeah, they'd have chosen you if you didn't have that potential. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> exactly, but um, I, I feel like. Uh, I at a slight benefit 
to having done ski racing before because I sort of I have you know a bit of experience sort of looking for that last tenth of a second you know and that racing line that you know I, I don't have to learn from scratch in that sense no no and it, I mean it, it, you can tell from just speaking to you, you've got that determination to find it anyway so even if you did have to learn from scratch you'd be still going for it <laughs> Yeah, if the, if there's an extra mile per hour I can get, I, I will try and find it at all costs. <laughs> so then as well, you said that you were just kind of into motorsport from day one, essentially. Do you have any motorsport role models? Yeah, like uh, starting from that, like, um, you know, I, I should probably mention that uh, from a young age, I, I uh, was actually used to do laps of my house on a pedal go-kart and seeing how <laughs> fast I'd do it but yeah I mean like I think when I was really young I was uh really fascinated by like Sebastian Loeb I loved the sort of car control aspect of rally driving and then mm -hmm. more recently you know watching sort of Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton you know having the duel of all time it was just so exciting to watch that I even get got my parents watching a couple of races, which was like, you know, trying to <laughs> <in itself. laughs> Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, like I think the sort of top drivers in all the disciplines of like, you know, high level mo most sport is uh, I, I always find so fascinating how they do it. You know, how much sacrifice they they put up and in all their lifestyle choices they do to get to the best mm. they can be. I'm saying Loeb and Lewis and Max are not exactly, they're, they're like the best of the best as well. So it's kind of, you, you can get to the top of the game, but staying there for as long as they have is no no easy feat. So Exactly. I mean, uh, you know, with Loeb, you know, he sort of, he stops one, you know, he stops rally driving and then sets Pike's Peak record. And then, you know, some people just have this feel and talent with behind a wheel that, you know, is, is, pretty interesting to watch on video <laughs> I mean, you, you're just scaring over all, as much footage as you can to see what you can learn and take from it because it's like there's got to be something here that i can use <laughs> exactly like um it's you, i think a lot of them are sort of I, I used to speak to a sports psychologist who used to like for downhill racing she used to always tell me um trying to teach me ways of feeling comfortable out of control and i find if you look at say um some of the rallies or you know some of those unbelievably fast turns at silverstone and formula one you know to a certain extent you know you can't control everything but seeing how they say cool calm and collected and just feel the car like it's a part of their body um you know, being out of control, but being completely comfortable with that, I just find such a fascinating mm. thing. It's just second nature to them. Yeah, yeah. So then you've been getting to grips with everything since August, like you were saying. What's been the biggest challenge you've had to face so far on that front? <sighs> the biggest thing is, uh, is actually the very boring subject of um, <laughs> sponsoring it because... Uh, you know, it's 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 not a cheap sport to go into. <laughs> no. um, it is, uh, you know, even just the equipment, you know, you have to, you know, buy the right stuff, you know, make sure it's the right specification for the latest state of, you know, safety standards. And all of it starts to stack up. But, you know, the sort of the driving is the sort of the cherry on top. But there's so much behind the scenes of like, you know, um, yeah, the co of course, I guess that's the, the hardest thing um, to, to to deal with, I guess. Well, it makes sense. I mean, it's, it's again, you, you feel like it's so with, with the team, Brit, they've got such a niche category there and what they're doing while they're trying to achieve, it should maybe make things easier. But obviously, that's not how things work, unfortunately. So it's, yeah, again, exactly. it's another challenge you know, for you. You know, uh, yeah, yeah you, you're given this amazing car. And, uh, you know, I guess there is this thought in the back of your mind. You've got this amazing team and amazing car behind you. You don't want to be, especially as a rookie, the one who puts it into the ditch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, do, do that on the sim, maybe, but, but not, not when it comes to the real thing. 
exactly the same you can do that all day but um yeah i wouldn't be too popular <laughs> in real life so then a couple of fun questions to finish off with now which racetrack would you love to go and race on so i have done the tourist fasten at the nurburgring mm. um a few times to me that is the all the nordschleife nurburgring is I think the track of all time to have so many turns, elevation change, um, and it being basically 13 miles long. I just think that is, you know, the people who do 24 hours there, you know, that is a serious endurance on the the mind and body. Uh, Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of low grip areas, especially if there's any damp and it's quite narrow. I just think that is the ultimate track of all time. Uh, and I would absolutely love to race there one day. So whenever I ask that question, this is a track that comes up a lot, and I'm not surprised, and it's just every time I can't argue with the logic behind it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, even in my little one series, <laughs> uh, you know, you can get jumps, you go, you can hit the bump stops with the compression. You, you know, there's a lot of oh my God moments there um, every single lap you do. <laughs> So I think it's again one of those tracks that uh, people don't mind what car they're in as long as they get to have a go around it because they feel like they can still get something out of it. It's just one of those one exactly, of those tracks. Like even if you're in like a Land Rover, you'll still have like such a, an experience because even if you're not going that quick, it's it's such a cool thing to see everyone else going mm. for it because you know there's a lot of good drivers and a lot of good cars there. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a place that you know. It, it's just, it, it's it's so dangerous it's amazing <laughs> and then finally totally random off topic question which two animals would you choose to swap the sounds that they make so i i have a cat and i get a lot of fun made out of me for this having a cat by a couple of my mates uh so i think if inst- that i could remove the meowing it makes and swap it to that of a lion i think that would uh, a bit more intimidating command a bit more respect <laughs> so it's a strategic choice but i like it yeah well it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today uh i will stick any social media links for you down in the description of this video for anyone watching and listening so they can go find you and follow you as you go and make your way onto the podium at some point this year fingers crossed and uh, yeah good luck with everything and thanks for being here today thank you very much thanks again to james for coming onto the curbs with me and i wish him the best of luck for the 2022 season Join me again soon when I'll be chatting to another famous face from the world of motorsport. In the meantime, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and check out the other videos on the On The Curbs YouTube channel. Away from YouTube, you can follow me over on Instagram at t.ilwas.daily.drivetribe. Thank you for listening. I'll see you again next week for the next episode.